Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to my channel for another video. I want to talk about something that a large majority of people have probably experienced or at least tried at some point during their lives. I am talking about a low carb diet. But more specifically, I want to talk about why strength tends to fall while on a low carb diet. So let's break down the science and get into this video. In order to understand why strength falls on a low carb diet, we first need to take a look at how the body creates and utilizes, wait for it, energy. Most of us have heard of ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it is the ultimate energy source within the body. To put it simply, ATP is essentially a phosphate bond that has been broken up, which thus releases energy into the body. Everything we do boils down to ATP in some fashion. Now, without getting too in depth, understand that ATP can be created both aerobically, with oxygen, and anaerobically, without oxygen. But the processes in which they are created are a little different. First, we have aerobic metabolism, which occurs when the body has enough oxygen available to create energy. Glucose is converted into something called pyruvate thanks to the Krebs cycle, which is a topic for another day. Pyruvate then enters the mitochondria, aka the powerhouse of a cell, and combines with oxygen to create energy. This energy pathway is very efficient, but it's pretty slow. Second, we have anaerobic metabolism, which again takes glucose and again converts it into pyruvate. But instead of going into the mitochondria, the pyruvate enters the cytoplasm and is turned into lactate via a process called glycolysis. The byproduct of this is something you might have heard of and experienced before, lactic acid. You are fatiguing through muscle failure by way of lactic acid burn. From an energy standpoint, aerobic metabolism uses protein, carbohydrates, and fat and can be used continuously. Anaerobic metabolism only uses carbohydrates for energy and does not last very long. One is not necessarily better than the other, but aerobic activity is more universal in typical day-to-day -day activity. Here is an idea of how much ATP is produced when comparing the anaerobic system to the aerobic system. With the anaerobic system, one gram of glucose creates approximately three ATP, while one gram of glucose through the aerobic system with oxygen creates approximately 39 ATP. So interestingly enough, gram for gram, your glucose goes further with the aerobic system. So you might be asking yourself then, why do so many people say carbs are such a good energy source if they are not very efficient? Well, lucky enough for us, we have additional enzymes within the body that expedite the process. Just keep in mind though that we are limited when it comes to the anaerobic system because of the accumulation of lactic acid which, as I stated before, is a byproduct of anaerobic metabolism, so we can only go so far. So let's finally go back to the universal question behind this video. Why does strength decrease when on a low carb diet or in ketosis? Now that you have a general understanding of how ATP is utilized within the body, you might have already formulated an answer. You see, we cannot use fats as a source of energy when we are performing high intensity activity. No matter how hard you try, it just does not happen. Most weightlifting exercises like the squat, deadlift, bench press, shoulder press, sprinting, etc. are higher intensity anaerobic activities. So in the days following the implementation of a low carb diet, glycogen stores, the stored form of carbohydrates within the body, will gradually decline faster for those who do continue to do higher intensity activity and eventually you will have used up most if not all of your glycogen stores. Also keep in mind that glycogen requires water to be stored. The initial decrease in weight after starting any low carb protocol is going to be coming from both water and glycogen. This is why we often show that flat muscular look that you hear so many weightlifters talking about. So. If you take away the catalyst for ATP production in the anaerobic system, being glycogen, 
then you ultimately take away the ability to create the energy required to perform and execute high intensity activities, especially those that require quick bursts of explosiveness and strength. Now, this does not mean that you won't be able to lift weights. You haven't cursed yourself or anything like that. Uh, I promise. <laughs> and no, this does not mean you're going to lose your gains either. Again, this just simply means that your body is not capable of creating the energy needed to maximally lift or perform high intensity anaerobic activities. I have personally experienced this myself. I recently started a ketogenic lifestyle for the first time and in the first week or two, uh, my glycogen went down as was expected and my strength along with it. Did it bother me? Maybe a little at first, but eventually I just accepted the fact that this is just how my body prefers to function and use energy. On the flip side, this opens the door to incorporate more aerobic based cardiovascular activity into your training as you will be uh, utilizing fat and ketones for energy instead of carbohydrates. Fat and ketone bodies do extremely well in general in the aerobic with oxygen activity. So at the end of the day, don't be alarmed if you adopt a ketogenic or low carbohydrate lifestyle and your strength drops. It's just the body's way of rebalancing energy production within the body. Anyway guys, if you have stuck with me this far, I want to thank you for watching the video. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a future video. I have a lot of great stuff planned in the coming days and weeks, so definitely stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.